Hello, dear friends. I'm present before you once again with a new lesson. And the lesson is based on grammar. Uh, what to use uh, the definite article the. Not everywhere you can use the definite article the. But uh, what to use and what uh, not to use. That's the question. So we'll learn today a few tips as to where we can use the definite article the. All right? So look at the whiteboard. But before we start our lesson, today's lesson, I would like to tell you to kindly uh, watch this video on full screen. OK? If you don't watch on full screen, it will be difficult for you to read what is written on the whiteboard. So please follow the instruction and let's get going. We use the plus adjective without a noun to talk about groups of people. Is it clear? Or you need me, you want me to explain that? It's better for me to explain that in uh, easier terms. So when you are using an adjective, I hope you know what an adjective is. Uh, adi adjective, uh, of course, uh, is a word that qualifies uh, a noun or a pronoun. So any word that qualifies a noun or a pronoun is known as an adjective. So before, if, if before the adjective, if you use the, T H E. Of course, the adjective will be uh, used without any noun following it, without any common noun uh, following it, or without any uh, any sort of noun following it. For example, if you say the rich people, it has a very clear meaning, and everybody knows very well. So there is nothing more to learn about this. But if you say the rich, you know, rich is an adjective and we are using the definite article the before rich. So as we are using uh, the before the adjective and look here, the adjective is not followed by any noun. So before any adjective, if you use the, it simply this phrase then uh, means all the people, all the things belonging to that category. For example, the rich. The rich here means all the rich people that inhabit uh, the face of this planet. We are not talking about a few rich people or a single rich man uh, or a woman. We are talking about all the rich people of the world. So we may say the rich. In the same way, when you use the adjective the poor, P O O R, and if it is preceded by the, the poor, without any noun following it, then it simply means all the poor people that live under the sun. All right? For example, here you see the young. The word young is an adjective. And we are using the before young. The young. In the same way, the old. Old is an adjective preceded by the definite article, the, the old. Elderly, elderly is an adjective. It is preceded by the definite article, the, the elderly. Rich is an adjective preceded by the, the rich. The poor, the homeless, the sick, the dead, the disabled. The unemployed, the injured. Okay, so all these words, not only all these words, uh, there are many more adjectives, uh, but uh, we are not uh, writing here all the uh, adjectives because it's not possible for us to accommodate all the adjectives uh, in the space of this white word only. But it is uh, just uh, for example. So when you use the adjective before uh, the adjective, you use the definite article the. Then it simply means all the people of that particular group. The young means all the young people. The old means all the old people. The elderly means the, uh, all the elderly people. The rich, all the rich people. The poor, all the poor people. The homeless, 
all the people who are homeless, the sick, all the people who are suffering, who are ailing, the sick, the dead. Here you see the dead. Dead is an adjective preceded by the, the dead. So when we say the dead, we refer to all the people who have died. The disabled. Disabled means crippled or handicapped. The disabled is an adjective and we are using the definite article, the, the disabled. Following uh, the adjective, there is no noun. The unemployed. All the people who are jobless, the unemployed. The injured. All the people who are somehow injured. So, the young, what's the meaning of this? Young people, the rich, rich people, etc. Do you, now the sentence is necessary for us to make some sentences with these uh, examples or else uh, it may be a little difficult for some of you to understand what to use and how to use uh, these uh, phrases. Do you think the rich should pay higher taxes? Not a few rich people? And there is no uh, category of rich people, like uh, those who are call, called the rich are all included in this phrase. It is not that a person who has uh, a few millions or a person who has uh, a few billions, nothing of that sort. All the people whom we call rich, the rich. So do you think the rich should pay higher taxes? The rich of a country, the rich, maybe the rich of uh, India, the rich of uh, the United States, or the rich of uh, Japan. So we refer to all the rich people. Should they pay higher taxes? Next, we need to do more to help the homeless. We are doing something for the homeless, but we feel the need to do more for the homeless, for the homeless people, for all the people who are homeless. The young, the rich, the injured, etc. are plural in meaning, yes. It is very important for us to know this particular tip or else we cannot use uh, these uh, phrases successfully. There may be some grammatical error. So when we are saying the rich, as we mean all the rich people, so the rich, this phrase, is a plural phrase. Though here there is no AS or ES added to this because these are all adjectives, not nouns. So these adjectives used in this manner um, are generally uh, plural in sense, in meaning. You can't say the poor is, follow this, is, IS is, it is wrong. Why? Here, the poor, this phrase is treated as a plural, as this phrase, the poor, is treated as uh, a plural, so it must be followed by are, not is. So the poor is not always honest, cross. Wrong. Wrong. So how will you rectify this mistake? Simply. Delete is and write are. The poor are not always honest. In the same way, the rich are. Or uh, the homeless are. The homeless are in pain. Not the homeless is in pain. The homeless are in pain. And that is the rule of Oxford. So it is very difficult for us to ignore this rule. All of us who speak English or write English, not only in our country, all over the world have to follow the same rule because this rule is stipulated by Oxford for everybody to uh, follow. If you do not follow these rules, you are going to be wrong, incorrect. So it is better for us to speak correct English, to write correct English, and for that reason, it is peremptory for us to know these rules. Next. Here you see where you will use the, and where you will not use the. We use mount and lake before a name without the. If you use the word mount, followed by the name of the mount or if you use the word lake followed by the name of that lake specific name of that lake 
that you will not use the definite article the or not even a nothing of that sort that's a, a proper noun and when you use this proper noun remember you are not going to use the so it is example see mount everest not the mount everest don't say that he has climbed the mount everest he has climbed mount everest do you plan to climb mount everest not the mount everest okay remember this repeatedly i'm trying to hammer this idea into your uh, brain so that uh, when you speak english or write english by mistake also you do not use the before mount followed by the name of the mount but if you use the word mount without any uh, name of the mount then you may use the or a uh, no problem mount everest in the same way mount etna mount etna etna is the name of a mount so here you see the word mount is used followed by the name of this mount mount etna so not the mount etna simply mount etna lake superior superior is the name of a lake so when we are using lake superior we shall not of course use the we will not say the lake superior we will simply say lake superior in the same way lake victoria victoria is the name of this lake so we are using lake victoria without any uh, definite article for example the example sentences they live near the lake there is a lake say in your uh, area or near your a house there is a lake so you are saying that uh, let us uh, go and sit by the lake all right no problem but if you use the name of that lake if that lake has a name and you are using the name of the uh, lake after the word lake so do not use the for example they live near lake superior here you see they live near the lake no name is here so the lake next they live near lake superior not the lake superior lake is followed by the name of the uh, lake superior uh, this is uh, i i sometimes feel you know when i uh, write english or i speak english i sometimes think these rules are a bit arbitrary in nature it seems so to me i'm not uh, saying that it is uh, in fact so but uh, i feel like that because uh, before um, lake plus name of the lake before mount plus name of uh, the mount you cannot use the definite article the but you see here we use the with the names of oceans seas rivers and canals isn't it a bit funny i feel so at least Please, if you feel the same, write down in the comment box. Or if you have some other opinion, please let me know, know your opinion um, through the comment box. When you are using the name of the ocean or name of a sea or the name of a river or the name of a canal, do not forget to use the always the must go with the name of a river the must go with the name of an ocean the must go with the name of a sea the must go with the name of a canal for example the atlantic atlantic is a name atlantic is the name of an ocean but here you see before atlantic we are using the atlantic and it's the rule you have to abide by this rule the red sea the name of the sea red sea so it's a proper noun but still we have to use the before the name of a sea the red sea the nile nile is a river and it's the name it's a proper noun so we have to use the nile in the same way uh, if you uh, if you live near uh, the river Ganga, don't forget to use the definite article the before Ganga, the Ganga, or sometimes we say the Ganges. The Ganges is better for us to say the Ganga because uh, 
the English people could not successfully pronounce the word Ganga and therefore they used to call it Ganges. But we may not follow that. The Indian Ocean is the name of an ocean. The Indian Ocean. Canal. The Suez Canal. Suez is the name of a canal. But we are using the definite article, the Suez Canal. Next, we use the with the names of deserts. When we are talking about any desert and we are using the name, we are uh, mentioning the name of a certain desert uh, um, across this globe, we have to use the, the definite article, the. For example, the Sahara. Sahara is the name of a particular desert. But we are asked, we are required to use the before the name of this desert. So the Sahara, the Gobi Desert. Gobi is the name of a desert, but we have to use the, the Gobi Desert. Next, we use the with plural names of people and places. So when we are talking, uh, when we are using the plural name of a, a place or the plural name of a, a certain group of people or a family of uh, people, we have to use the, T-H-E. For example, the Roy's. Roy's a surname in India especially. Abroad also there is a Roy, there, is, there are people with this surname. But say we are using the surname that is uh, used in our country, Roy. So when we are pluralizing this, Roy's, don't forget to use the definite article, the. The Roy's. In the same way, the Chakrabartis, the Mukherjee's, the Chatterjee's, the Saints, the uh, Pauls. So when you are talking about the plural, you are adding is to a surname, then don't forget to use the definite article the. In the same way, the Netherlands. From this name, it is evident that it is in the plural, Netherlands. So the Netherlands. Don't say you have gone to Netherlands. Don't say, oh, my friend has gone to Netherlands. Do not say this. You will be wrong there. You have to say, my friend has gone to the Netherlands. The Netherlands. The Sundarbans. Here, near Kolkata. The Sundarbans. A group of islands. Sundarban is always used in the plural. S is there, you see. Sundarbans. It's a group of islands. And we have to use the. Because the rule says, before uh, we have to use the with plural names of people and places. Place. So the Sundarbans, plural, the Sundarbans. In the same way, uh, the United States. Never say United States only without the definite article. The USA. Okay? Uh, the UK. Whenever this is a this has a plural sense. Uh, we have to use the before that uh, name. Uh, in our country, Punjab, you know, Punjab is a, a collection of uh, five rivers. Therefore, we do not say Punjabs, but uh, often you will see the definite article the is used before Punjab, in the Punjab, because five rivers are associated with uh, the name Punjab. The Himalayas, this particular thing you should remember. Here you see, before the name of a mount, we are not required to use the. We will be wrong if we use the definite article before the name of a mount. But here, when you are talking about a mountain range, mountain range, then we have to use the, the Himalayas. It seems a bit uh, ridiculous. So why? Uh, why, why should we use the before Himalayas, if not before Mount, Mount Everest? So we don't say the Mount Everest. But before, the, before Himalayas, we have to use the Himalayas. Right? Because it's a mountain range. 
Uh, instead of uh, Himalayas, you may use Alps. Alps is also a range of uh, mountains. So we say the Alps. The Alps. So that's all about this lesson. I think this lesson has been quite crystal clear to everybody. But still, if you have any uh, question regarding this particular lesson, or if you find that there is some gray area in my explanation of this lesson, so write down, don't, uh, don't hesitate to write down in the comment box. If you, uh, I see that uh, many of you have failed to understand a certain part of it, I'll make a separate video, I swear. Okay? Thank you very much for watching this video. See you again in the next session. But please discharge your duties, my dear friends. And you know what your duties are. To write a comment, to share this video session with your friends and others who are willing to learn English. And... Uh, of course, uh, don't forget to subscribe. If you have not yet subscribed to this channel, please do subscribe to this channel. If you find this uh, video useful, and uh, in the same way, if you think that you have enjoyed, if you feel that you have enjoyed this lesson, you have learned something, this particular lesson, this video session has been useful to you, give a like. Okay? Thank you very much. See you again in the next session. Bye-bye.